Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falco Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. Uh, today, gonna be a Patreon cast as my voice cracks a little bit. Don't worry, I'm very old. It's gonna be Serral versus Clem on Lightshade. Top left, we've got Serral. Bottom right, we have Clem. Alright, man, so Clem has quickly established himself as a force to be reckoned with from the European region alongside Raynor and Serral. He has beat Serral several times already in the year 2021, but maybe you're watching this in 2022. Hmm, if you're watching this in 2021, thank you very much for supporting me at patreon.com slash falconpaladin for at least $1 a month. Gives you the right to watch incredible casts before anybody else on the YouTube channel. And if you're watching this in 2022, happy new year, well... Maybe it's late January or early February, but Happy New Year all the same. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe. I'm here five times a week with StarCraft 2 content. All right, what are we doing here today? Mm, Overlord's checking for proxies. Clem's not interested in that one. Not today. Not even the littlest, tiniest bit. 16, 18, 17, what looks like a one racks expand based on the gas timing for Clem. Got a Reaper name ready to go. If you want to submit a Reaper name for me to read on the cast, do so in the comments of any video. Just put Reaper name so I can find it, and then say the name. And then if you want a backstory, you can. You don't have to have a backstory. That's not a requirement. SCV's job is to see if it was a hatch first play. And you know what, SCV? It was. It was a hatch first play. You don't know that yet. And turderp, there it is. Muy muy excelente. So Reaper says, cool, we can run out, let's do this. So Reaper's name is Falcon Paladin. His love of StarCraft had him wanting to get a first-hand view of the action. So he enrolled in the Reaper program, tell his loved ones that he loves them too. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, please stay alive. You're in the hands of Clem, so that's pretty good. It's pretty good, right? You're probably not gonna die in the first three minutes, but staying alive the entire game is probably too much to ask. You're going to be in here amongst some Hellions in like three minutes and then, you know, probably die that way. <clears throat> but pretty standard stuff from Clem Factory coming up. Hellions are going to be in the future. The Zerg player, Serral, doesn't want to make any other units except drones at the moment. And that's what he's doing. Working on drones. Got his queens. Reaper has zero kills because Serral's control is insanely good. And, ah, oh, almost gets one. Come on, Falcon, you can do it. Get a Ling kill. Be a boss. Heal up with those combat drugs. You're going to need them. You're going to need that full health later on. And there's your starport. So yeah, 1-1-1-ing one, one, one it. Destiny Cloudfist build, as Husky used to call it, before he stopped casting StarCraft entirely and left us all to die. But yeah, basically the 1-1-1 one, one, one build was back before Legacy of the Void, back before they started off with 12 workers, it was very viable to go Barracks Factory Starport and get a bunch of stuff and get some aggression done. But now with 12 workers, you have time to also get an expansion in there. So... Whatever you want to call it, I don't know. It's not the exact same build, but it's kind of the same thing. Don't you know? Hellions, production tab says. Speed for Zerglings, production tab says. Oh boy. All right, Falcon, I need you to stay alive, but I'm really emotionally invested in this one. Uh, the Lings don't have speed yet, so they can't do... Ooh, all right, got a kill! Hooray! Ah, oh, that's great. Look, getting a kill is more than... Oh, two kills is more most... Like, more than most Reapers get, even at the professional level, getting two kills in the first four minutes is an accomplishment in and of itself here against somebody like Serral. So, annoying for Serral, but definitely not game-changing in any way. Got the scout off. Saw there wasn't a lair. Saw there wasn't a second gas. Saw there wasn't a Roach Warren. Good scout. And... No! Run! Why were you in the front? Get in the back! Get in the back! Get in the robot, Shinji. Get in the back, Falcon! Gee, at least heal up with combat shields. Combat shields. Combat drugs, please. There they are. There are the delicious, delicious combat drugs healing our friend up to 100. Come on. Don't go in there before he's back to 100% health. He's going to die. Come on. Come on. Okay. He's alive. He's alive. I don't know if he's going to YOLO in here. There's not an armory. So these are not going to be... Oh, these aren't going to be Hellbats, which means they can just YOLO in here. All right. Nope. Don't die, Kitty 8 charge. And at the back of the retreat, once again! Yeah! <laughs> no! Oh, 
Oh, you had him. He was alive. Oh, that hurts. That hurts my soul. He was alive. And he didn't realize there was queens coming from the other direction to murderize him. I don't even know what was over here at all. Was that a Hellion that you knocked in the water? Oh, it was a Liberator. Ah, yes. Liberator that ends up getting zero kills because, um... Wait. Wait. Oh, gets a queen kill. Okay, okay. I don't know. Queen kill is better than nothing. All right. Well, third base coming up from Clem. Wall. Bit of a wall situation inside of his natural, which is uh, pretty traditional stuff here. Working for a reactor on a starport. It's going to be marines. A lot of marines. We're making five at a time right now. Also, a siege tank coming in. This is where you start gearing up for the attack that can kill somebody like Serral. I think most TVZ losses were in the Zerg player loses comes at this stage of the game. We're about seven to eight minutes when a bunch of Marines show up with Stim and Combat Shield, their Siege Tank support, and the Zerg player really just wants to be make drones. They really just want to drone up to 100 workers, but they need to make enough to defend, just enough to defend against this attack without overmaking, because if you overmake, your economy's poop, and you lose later. But if you undermake, you die. So this is the trickiest stage of the game for me, and I think even for somebody like Serral. We'll see how he does. He's droning. He's making some lings right now. He's working on centrifugal hooks, which uh, not be available for this incoming attack. And I, in fact, I don't think it is going to be. So we got 12 lings, which is definitely not enough to stop this. The queens uh, assist. Nine queens are going to be fairly useful in this situation. Oh, the ling scouting the attack coming early is also beautiful. Extraordinarily beautiful here today. Do, do, do. Creep tumors going down. That's a win for Clem. You can fight the queens, but like draining the transfuse off them is pretty good because it means they don't have energy for injects or creep tumors later, which they want. Link's are going to get a counterattack? He's just going to absolutely wander on down this way to the third base and try to murder everything. Yes, but there's Hellbats. Hellbats are trying to not get fully surrounded. And nicely done. Good micro there from Clem. So that was not a fruitful attack at all. So Difficult Hook's still not done. Creep Tumor's dying. I'll kill this hatch, Clem says, if you want me to. And this is Cyril. Like, come on. Come on, Centrifugal Hooks. That'll change everything. Also, these lings may be going... Ooh, Banelings. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to come from the right side and wipe this out. And the left side, possibly. This is a big group of units, though. They could also maybe try to sneak down here. Cause some problems at the natural base level. All right, so I think the Marines are like, okay, so Difficult Hooks is done by now. Clem knows, so he's going to take some hits if he's on creep, no matter what. Oh, no, the fourth base gets canceled. Lings get inside the natural base of Clem. Banelings are rolling through. Crap, 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 says everything. The Banelings, do they want to? Yep, they just bust the front door open. They're going right after these SCVs and connecting a little bit. Pretty good pull from Clem there. The Banelings are like, can we... Oh, do you have Burrow? No. What are you doing? You can't just... Okay, well, nothing. I guess the answer was nothing. Nine SCVs go down, which you know what? Terran is not dead until Terran is dead. So losing nine SCVs totally sucks. It keeps Clem on the back foot when he doesn't want to be on the back foot. Drilling Claws on the way here. Uh, but, you know... Yeah, I don't know. Clem not dead. Infester pit? Infestation pit? Look, it's 11 p.m. Cut me some slack. Burrow is on the way, so I was like, you know, I could have used Burrow back here. Man, he's got another base. He's taking... He's just all over the place with the base count at the moment. It is five, which is pretty insane. We've done a pretty good job of winning all the engagements so far, though. So the first 10 minutes belong to the Zerg. It's hard to fight back. That is so many frigging Zerglings. Oh, my gosh. So this wall's been destroyed a few times. It's getting rebuilt and repaired. But um, if Clem wins this game, I'm going to be surprised. Moderately surprised. Not 
like insanely surprised. Moderately surprised. I mean, I think at this point we need to start making some ghosts, some liberators. Like Marine Hellbat Widowmine is going to be good, but Serral just has so much stuff. Okay, there's not a base here we can kill uh, this bottom left base. We can kind of sneak up on this one because there's no creep along this bottom lane. But the units are in the general vicinity to respond to this. There's a drone pull. Yeah, because we didn't see this coming. Unfortunately, saving the hatch is not a big deal. This is so much. The explosions, the connections are good. And then these guys off creeper just like, we can engage. Absolutely, we can engage on this. Why not? Why would we not be able to engage on this? And again, if your Zerg opponent is spending this much time inside your natural, it's just going to be a hard time for... What the what? How did they get this? Oh, they wandered back in and lost everybody, but they took down the hatch. Okay, you know what? You know what? Clem might be in a better spot than I thought he was. The Zerg's been knocked back down to four bases. Clem's happily on three. He hasn't, didn't lose any SCPs during that engagement. Maybe a couple, not a huge number. It is 79 to 65 army supply, and the income is pretty even right now, which does not bode well for Serral either. Okay, Clem. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Do, 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 do. And then I saw her face. I'm a believer. Do, do, do. That's a lot of Zerg, though. Yeah, and on creep. I don't know. Tanks firing. Doing some work. Uh, oh, this base is not a planetary yet. Serral just has this absolutely innate ability to know what Clem's timings are and absolutely shut them down. That fourth base does not happen because of Serral's understanding of Clem's timings in this matchup. You could show up right on time. You show up too early, doesn't do anything. You show up too late, doesn't do anything. You gotta show up in the tiny window when the planetary is upgrading to a planetary. And then you can accomplish some stuff. This group gets just absolutely eaten. Um, mm. Nom 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 nom. Alright, that's not good. Gonna actually take the main base and land it at the fourth as an emergency measure here for Clem. He'd rather this be a planetary, but you know what? We're gonna keep this ball moving. We're gonna keep expanding. We're gonna keep having a bunch of bases. Serral does have his fourth base back. At the top left, or he hasn't re-expanded to the bottom left because there's a widow mine in the way, and it probably killed a drone that was intending to do that later. So it's basically Ling Baneling Queen. That's all Serral's doing right now. Uh, I assume based on the upgrade path, he's going to go for Ultralisks eventually here, but he doesn't have an Ultralisk cavern. He's got a hive, which is nice. Marine's trying to stutter step, but just got to go. At some point, you just got to go. Okay, a couple of queens going down here. Push up the left side, clearing some of this creep. Very nice, very nice. Another scan here would be good, but gosh dang, Serral's entire army is here. He is making an Ultralisk Cavern now. Widowmind's not getting those great connections you want. That's a beautiful split from Serral. Oh. oh, hang on, hang on, and hang on. Oh, that was disgusting too. Serral, <laughs> you're micro. It's crazy pants. Top side. Nope. Take it. Can Clem do this? He just doesn't have the numbers here. Widowmind, friendly fire more than anything else there. So Clem got his fourth base. He's got a fifth base coming up too, but a burrowed ling is shutting that down. It's like two can play at this game. Ooh, that was a nice 25 kill Widowmind hit here though. All right. Widowmind's the great comeback unit of Terran. Always have been. Kindness plating on the way. Working on plus three ground carapace two. Uh, uh, adrenal glands on the way from Serral. A little bit later than you would expect, perhaps. But, okay. Interesting cyclone here. Oh, burrowed bait like it. Well... You know, a good burrowed Baneling hit is going to be something that's a little difficult to overcome in this matchup. But you know what? Clem's macro is insane. And he's alive. I mean, he's not super alive, but... Oh, what 
auto mine drop. Okay. Eight drone kills down. 68 workers for Serral. This base is likely very dead. That said, there's a liberator here, so the lings can't stick around forever. This group gets chased away. Serral's doing a pretty good job. Oh, this base gets killed too. Hmm. This is tr Man. Clem's up 181 to 162 supply. Are you kidding me right now? I mean, probably not, but... Ugh, Widow Mine's catching some Banelings there. Actually unloads into a bunch of Adrenalings and says, I can handle this. He can't, but he thinks he can. His attention is over here at the 12 o'clock where there's Ultralisks out now. Hmm. So Clem's got a bigger army, more workers, and an overall better supply. This is absolutely insanity pants at the moment. Uh, but keeping this base, Clem needs it. He needs this to be a base. Sensor Tower getting sniped is a big win. Sensor Tower's dying is always good. Dude, Clem, how is Clem not in the worst position ever? How am I not just like, yeah, Serral has this GG at 15 minutes? Because Clem's macro's insane. Because he makes good trades. He's, you know, Widowmine is a good unit. That's a big part of this. The Marauder count has been increased to deal with the Ultralisk. He's not going Ghosts. And Anabolic Synthesis is a ways off here too, actually. Yeah, waiting for the Widow Mines to fire and then jumping on top of him. Dude, the SCB count is falling really fast or precipitously, as one of my favorite vocabulary words would describe it. 11 SCVs down is 50, 64 to 50 workers here. Transfuses on the Ultralisk. Try to keep him alive. Clem just refusing to engage. This is what I hate about playing Terran is they don't ever have to engage with my Ultralisks, right? They just, they, they kite, they kite, they kite. I got to like fungal on these guys to slow them down. Serral making some fungal would be pretty fantastic here, but I don't think he's made any infestors in this game at all. Resources lost. 25,000 for Serral and 18 for Clem. Dude. Dude. I mean, this isn't a great engagement for Serral here. Ultra's off. God, that would have mind connection. 19 kills. Yeah, Ultra's off creep. Yeah, pulling back to a planetary. Are there enough Banelings to do this? They're chasing the SCVs, and it does allow them to get enough to take down this planetary. Awesome. That was really good, because Clem's struggling on income right now, and this has been favoring Serral for the last 10 minutes. Engagement down to the south, because, of course, every good Terran player has double-pronged engagements happening. On the offensive pretty much the whole game. Uh, I don't know about coming down here, guys. That was a great target fire on those Banelings, though. You know? I don't know. Ultra's getting target fired as well. Blah, blah. Exploding. Deathly here. Marauder's not very good against Lings. But, you know, the Marines are in general situations. The Liberator can focus this Ultra... You know, we don't need the Liberator to focus the Ultra list down. It's dead. It's 184 to 159 supply. Clem, you madman. What is even happening here today? Dude, he killed this base. He killed the base at the 11 o'clock too. Oh, you know what? I'm actually tempted to blame this on for Serral is lack of spellcasters. Although, I mean, Clem hasn't had them either. What a very weird ZVT. No ghost play, no infester play, no viper play. This has just been Marine Marauder Medivac Widow Mine. Versus Ling Ultra Bane Wing. This is going pretty well, and that Clem does tap out at 18 minutes. Okay. So Serral's just able to get some major victories down here to the south. Get into this third base, too. Clem has 56 total workers, which is not ideal. His army value is only 57. And he's got 20 Marines and 16 Marauders, but I mean, that is a big time advantage. And when you're on the back foot as the Terran player, it's really, really hard to reestablish getting on the front foot. And be the one aggressive against somebody like Serral. That was nuts. That was a really, really good ZVT. And a great Patreon cast, I think. 19 drones died. Uh, 44 SCVs went down. A planetary died. Two, uh, rather, one command center. And three hatcheries went down. It was not bad for 18 minutes. But largely, it was just not making great trades. Serral was able to stick on Ling Bane Queen for way too long. Clem's early aggressive push to just... Didn't do enough. Didn't do enough to slow down the monster that is Serral, and he paid for it in the end.
Wow. 700 Zerglings died in 18 minutes. 137 Marines. Surprisingly few. Only made about 150 in this game. Liberators, kind of a big part of it. Marauders were a big part of it, too. And yeah, I think this was this was a, a game on the knife edge, right? If Clem's able to get a little bit more push, taking down maybe another hatchery, he wins this game. But the fact, I think a, a major part, we talked about this earlier, right? The Ling's running into this morphing in this upgrading planetary and killing it means that Clem had to take an orbital from his main and move it down here. And it was less defended against like Ling attacks. As we saw constantly, constantly running in here, it's very hard for Clem to defend it so far away from this area. So, a bit of a premature GG, but I think uh, recognizing... Actually, no. What the heck? Clem had 115 army supply. Did I get my GG right? Did Clem GG out? No! a new year for most of you and a new falcon making stupid mistakes dude clem went, clem won that again it's a weird weird thing because Cyril was on the offensive he had a bunch of army down here all these scbs were in a lot of trouble that really just feels like a widow mines are garbage great quit Right, look at this. Yeah, I mean, just a ton of Zergling blood down here. What am I getting massive hits? There's not a ton of Clem in this position, but it is 115 Clem to 57 army supply for Serral. This base is rolling, this base is rolling. I, uh, tiny bit premature. Look at me, I spent like five minutes talking about how Clem didn't do enough to win this game, and he totally won this game because I'm mentally challenged. And I have three brain cells. That's all there is to it. That's all there is to it. The end. I apologize. That was bad. But, yeah, no spellcasters. No spellcasters for either player. A no spellcaster, 18 minutes ZVT between two elite players. Wow. Oh, and actually, then those are Viper out. <laughs> there is a... It's right here. You can't see it because Serral GG'd out, but... There is a Viper out. Here it is. Doing some good stuff. And these drones are transferring down here. It's oversaturated. That's not great. I don't know. 62 workers. Losing this base totally sucks. This base is alive. This base is alive. This base and this base are alive. And he's killed this, kind of. This one, Liberators, got 23 kills. And it's just a Widow Mines are garbage play. Look at this. Widow Mines killed here, but Friendly Fire Splash. And then Widow Mines connect again. And then Sarah's like, that's it. I'm done. I'm out. Crazy. Oh, absolutely. Just. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, you know what? It's time for me to go to bed. Time to wrap this thing up. So, GG Clem getting the win up 172 to 120 supply over Serral. Fantastic victory for him. I apologize for maligning you and saying that you lost this game as long as I did. That's my bad. I'm. You know, if I was a more prideful person, I'd go back and record that ending. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. I don't have that much pride. All right, cool. So that is going to be it for me today. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void in a Patreon cast. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. You take care of yourself.